A few months ago I was trying to make a snake-like enemy for my game, with a very limited success. I couldn't really find any good resources on the internet and eventually I abandoned this. But I still really wanted to have my giant skeleton snake in my game. So I gave it another shot and this time it worked much better. This is actually based on one of the techniques I initially abandoned. Basically the whole body of the snake is made up of different actors that are following each other. But the difference from the previous version is that they are basically moving along a spline. There are three different types of actors. First one is the head, which is you know, obviously in the front and cannot be damaged while the rest of the body still exists. Basically when the player destroys the whole body, then the head can be also killed. Then there is the body which follows the head and at the end there is a tail which is basically a different model for the body segment. The main issue I had with this technique when I was first trying it out was that the body parts were getting stuck in each other and that was causing different physics issues and it was behaving really strangely because of that. Now because the whole snake is moving along a spline in a constant speed, these problems just can't happen. Also I played with different collision settings which should prevent all the body parts colliding with each other. The only thing they can collide with is the player character which also damages the player. Another benefit of the spline based movement is that it doesn't need any nav meshes and I just create a path for it to follow. On the other hand it can't really follow the player and it doesn't know where the player is, it just goes along its predefined path. Another great thing about this version is that the body itself is completely procedural. So I can set up as many body parts as I want, so the snake can be either really short or you know, extremely long. Basically it's just limited by performance. After figuring out the whole spline based movement, the most difficult part was reconnecting the snake after the player destroys one of its body segments. I kept having issues when the disconnected part of the snake's body would either get stuck in place or it would return to 000, zero coordinates. In the end I solved this by having each segment check if it is connected to something and it isn't. It asks the head which is the last segment in the hierarchy that is still connected to the head and then it reconnects to that last segment. Okay, now for a quick tutorial on how to recreate this. This is inside of the spline actor, which is basically an empty actor which has a spline component and billboard component. Each take I calculate a point on the spline and then take its transform and apply to the billboard. The billboard is there basically for debugging purposes so I can see where the point is moving on the spline. Then inside of the worm actor, at the start of the game I check if it is the head or if it's a body part. If it's just the body I enable movement and disable the collisions that would be causing the weird physics glitches. If it is the head however, uh, it checks how many bodies it's supposed to spawn and then it spawns them with a little bit of an offset so they don't spawn on top of each other. If it's the last index, it spawns a tail, which is basically just visually different part. Logic is the same for both tail and the body. Tail is just the last one. When the body segment is spawned, I, I basically tell it where the head is, which actor it is, and which is the actor it should follow. If it's supposed to follow the head or if it's supposed to follow a different body part. Then I enable movement of that body part and I add it to the list of all the attached actors inside of the head actor. Once the whole body is spawned, each body part gets assigned a child actor, which is basically the next body part after it. So segment number one would have segment number two as its child actor. And when all of this is done, the head saves the original body into a separate array. This will be important for checking if the whole body is still connected. Then on each tick it plays some sound that's not important. If it is the head, it searches for a new location, basically it takes the location of the billboard actor from the spline actor and moves to that location. It also calculates the rotation of the spline so it follows its curve nicely. If it is a body part, it will get to this one in a bit. It basically just follows whatever is in front of it, whatever is the target actor which was assigned 
over here when it was spawned. And it slowly moves towards its position and it sets its rotation to be looking at the target. If the target is missing, it asks the head actor to check which is the last connected segment in the hierarchy. So basically the head checks all the actors that were once connected to it and when it finds one that is missing it breaks the for loop and creates a new array which contains only the actors that are currently attached to the head. The detached segment then goes and picks the last actor that is still attached to the head and sets it as its new target and then it goes on to follow it. This is basically the main logic for the whole snake to work. I also have this check here uh, that determines if there are still some body parts. If there are none, the head then can take damage and can be killed. This is for damaging the player when the player touches the snake body, this spawns the projectiles. So yeah, that's about it. I hope this was somehow helpful to you. And if you like the snake, please consider wishlisting Rose on Steam, which is the game this snake belongs into. That's my, my, my game, I think. Uh, anyway, see you next time. Bye.